Alright, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. So today we're taking a look at the Z390 Aorus Master. The Aorus Master is meant to replace the Gaming 7. Um, and then the Gaming 9, I guess, is something over there. What's above Master? I don't know, Ultimate or something? No idea. Um, anyways, so this one is a very, very loaded motherboard. You get a better audio. You get 12 plus 2 digital power, you get Wave 2 Wi-Fi, and that's Intel Wi-Fi. And that's Intel's new Wi-Fi that's rated up to theoretically 1.733 gigabits per second. That's faster than your wired LAN most, in most cases, unless you have like 2.5 or 5 gigabits per second LAN. Alright, so let's take a look at the accessory package and do some unboxing. People tend to like that. So, yeah, here we go. And also, um, so they're talking about like Optane and that kind of stuff on the board too, so this board probably supports Optane. Oh, and two times copper PCB, so that's gigabytes away. They used to call it two ounce copper PCB. Some vendors also call it two ounce, but two times is kind of accurate. It used to just be one ounce uh, of the copper layer, um, and the extra ounce, uh, the doubling it up, really helps with cooling and stuff like that. So let's take a look. Motherboard, much better packaging than what we saw for the uh, the Pro. Uh, and that's mainly what you get with Gigabyte's more high-end motherboards. You get better packaging uh, because it's a more expensive board. It's kind of like an insurance policy they take out, I guess. But it also makes people feel like it's a more high quality. This is heavy. Very heavy. But that's the side. Holy, holy, wow. That's like five pounds. <laughs> Anyways, you get your stickers like you do with your other high-end stuff. I guess you get a VIP card. I guess you can take that out, put it on your credit card or something. Passport. Put it on your passport. No, kind of cool things. Um, you got your cable labels here, uh, so you can actually like identify what the cable is before plugging it in. So you just tag both ends and you plug it into like SATA three, and then you write SATA three on it, or you write like uh, this is this SSD. Um, yeah, and then you got a case badge here, um, decent, not bad. Okay, we'll take this out, Let's see what's up. Okay, and now we have some. Manuals, multilingual installation guide if you don't know how to build a computer. Uh, and here you have a Z370 Aorus Master User's Manual, and it's actually a thick user's manual. Drop out. Good girl. Alright, so here we have the uh, beautiful DVD no one uses. Yeah, no one uses it. So, everyone downloads. Well, I guess you could for LAN, but if you're installing Windows 10, if they use the Intel NIC, the driver will already be there. Uh, so you don't need it. I like bigger manuals like this. Did they put back the block diagrams? No, they did. Of course not. But I got them here. So I got the block diagrams for the Master and the Pro, so I can tell you exactly what's hooked up. Uh, I just gotta keep reminding myself which one is which, because they're put side by side. Um, here we have a ton of accessories. You know, people like to unbox. I don't know, it's just so much trash left over afterwards. Alright, so here we have temperature sensors. This motherboard supports the addition of two external temperature sensors. So you could like stick it into your GPU, um, like in the heat sink, so you get a more accurate temperature uh, of your GPU. So we got one there. Trash can. Another one. What is this? Okay, this is a RGB extension cable. Looks like Gigabyte's kind of backing away from RGBW. Um, maybe it confuses people. I get that's that would be my guess. Is that people are confused? Let's make sure I'm recording audio. For some reason, I have this feeling it's not. No, it is. I love how these devices have lights on them, so you don't have to go all the way over there. All right, and here we have a SATA. I guess we get four of them. This is standard. I mean, I use mostly M.2 now. Most boards only have like two or three of those, and if you want a lot of storage, like hard drives and stuff, I can see you not using them. Here we have a digital or addressable RGB extension cable. Um, so it extends uh, this like weird four pin to a three pin. Uh, I think a lot of Corsair accessories use a three pin. What is this? Another. Yep, another digital RGB extension cable. And digital can also be called addressable like on others, um, and Gigabyte has moved their spacing to be more compatible with other brands. Uh, Asus and Gigabyte came out with their digitals first, and uh, it, Gigabyte's was three right next to each other, Asus's was two space one, and uh, so pin compatibility, obviously they fight for it, and then Aga Asrock took up Asus's and MSI 
shifted to ASUS's. Um, so Gigabyte decided, you know what, if everyone else is going with it, why make things harder for our customers? I assume that's their line of thinking. Um, they still have the adapters in there, because like I said, Corsair's is three. Uh, some boards have a dedicated Corsair header, which is just an addressable header, but that's three pins. Okay, so we'll just leave this up here, so it's on the other side. Now this has integrated I.O., so I don't, oh my god. Okay, well if you like accessories, this motherboard's got you covered. Alright, so I'm not going to take these out, these are M.2 standoffs. Um, we got some cable Velcro ties. We have a uh, prize bandwidth SLI bridge. It says SLI on it. Yeah, you got Wi Fi, so you gotta have your Wi Fi antenna. And you got your remaining, remaining M.2 screws and stuff. Okay? And the Gigabyte antenna is magnetic, it has a magnet at the bottom. Um, Right here, I think. And you could just like put it on something metal like a case if your metal is made from something other than aluminum. I'll side check it out. Aluminum was very magnetic. Um, so let's take a look at this motherboard. Let's see how we're doing on zoom and stuff. Okay. Alright. Um, so, these motherboards you pull up from this end and you pull them out. Because a little portion goes underneath there, so it secures them basically. Okay, first time pulling this board out too. You guys like that? I like it. Um, I really like this heatsink. I mean, this is an actual heatsink with fins. There was actually something cool about it. Um, I have these marketing slides they give all the media they call media kits and they had one that kind of detailed their changes to the fins I hope it's in this one alright there we go okay so a few things I want to talk about we're taking this stuff off the heatsink wasn't that satisfying was for me. Alright. So this lights up and says ESS Sabre High Five. High Fidelity. PCH. Very nice mirror finish. Undoubtedly gonna pick up my fingerprints though. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that. Except not touch it. But then why would I bother reviewing it? Alright. So, you got some decent looking uh, M.2 heat sinks here. They're all metal. They seem to be a few millimeters thick. Um, so, they're not whimsy, wimpy. Uh, okay, so let's start with the heat sink. Let's see what's cool about it. Oh, I do want to mention the 2 ounce copper PCB. Gigabyte also has a slide in there saying that they increased the like width of the power plane. Uh, so, in there, the CPU has its own dedicated power plane, which are these two 8 pin headers right here. These two 8 pin headers. They dead, their power is dedicated to the CPU. Uh, it basically isolates the CPU power plane from the rest. And that also ensures that the CPU is not pulling power from this, which only has like one or two 12 volt wires uh, from the 24 pin. So you don't burn out your 24 pin. You know, that's the last thing you want to do. Um, so that's why it's isolated. And it's typically always isolated. Uh, every brand pretty much does it. I think on the server side it's a little different. But here, yeah, it's always isolated. And there's a power plane, and it's the amount of copper inside the PCB dedicated to the power of the CPU. And in this case, Gigabyte has widened it. Widened it, right? I don't know. Anyways, so they, they made it bigger, uh, wider, right? More area. So what else have they done? Okay, thin cut heat sinks. So this part of the heat sink that's cut and thicker, it looks better, right? But it doesn't have the best thermal performance, but it does take a thermal load. And then we have a Fins array, they say it's an increased 300% heat dissipation area compared to traditional heat sinks. Direct touch heat pipe, meaning the copper from the heat pipes are directly touching the new heat pads, which they actually picked out specifically for this design. And they call it a high thermal conductivity pad, and it's by using a layered 1.5 millimeter, 5 watt per millil millik Kelvin, high thermal conductivity pad, it can transfer 2.0 times more heat compared to traditional thermal pads. 
And we saw them use these same thermal pads in their X399 motherboard, the new one. And a thermal base plate. So I guess this has a back plate. And yeah, it seems like the back plate is actually touching the PCB. Something you don't typically see, to be honest, which is kind of sad. Okay, so I guess we're going over this part of the motherboard. Maybe we'll take a peek. Okay, we got a fan header there. Designed in Taipei right at the top. I'm very proud of that. They should be. Okay, and then we have RGB header here, a digital RGB header here. Uh, RGB, is that right? Yeah. RGB voltage selection. So by default, it's on 5 volt, and we switch this over, it'll go to, uh, which we'll call it, 12 volt. Now, I've seen these headers on Gigabyte motherboards before, and it's labeled OC button. So I guess it's an OC button right here, auto OC. And I guess it's a toggle or something because there's three pins. Um, so I don't know, maybe they'll sell an accessory or something that will make use of that. Oh, I'm making note of that screw there. I'm going to need that to take the back plate off, take the heat sinks off. <sighs> With the back plate, it makes my job harder, but it's better for you uh, because you actually get more features. So two more fan headers here. Fan header here, uh, and EC sensor there. So EC just means embedded controller. It's a secondary controller that handles like fan control or like any other like basically whatever the Super IO should do, but doesn't have enough pins to do. Uh, they call it an EC, embedded controller. So it's a secondary controller. I'll show you later, but this is for external temperature input. It does seem we have power phases here, um, and I honestly think they're for the USB. Uh, they're like boosters. They boost voltage. Uh, uh, for different types of charging. I believe this motherboard's front USB 3.0 is Quick Charge 3 compatible, meaning that the voltage level is going to be different. So I guess you need a boost uh, regulator instead of just like a buck that's used here. Anyways, so let's turn this around. Maybe they're down there. I see two down there. So maybe this is like VPP power? I don't know. DRAM looks to be... Huh. I gotta look it up. I gotta take a closer look. But it seems to be like a single phase, or maybe these are memory phases. Um, maybe they're bucks. Anyways, I'm not concerned. DDR4 doesn't use much power, so... Oh, wow, I almost missed it. This right here, these are voltage read points. I don't know what these big pads next to them are. Hopefully they're not solder points for something else, because that would be kind of weird. Um, but yeah, these are voltage read points right here. So you actually have manual voltage read points on this motherboard, something that we didn't really see on the gaming... Well, maybe it was on the gaming so. I don't remember every motherboard comes through. This is a USB 3.1 Type-C. So on the Gaming Pro, it was a USB 3.0 Type-C. This is USB 3.1 Type-C. And of course, coming come, going to come from the chipset. Uh, and then we have a Thunderbolt uh, header, a GPIO header, Thunderbolt Type-C. So you can add in a card. You get six US uh, SATA, six gigabits per second. You get dual BIOS, and one of them actually comes in a little socket. So down the line, let's say you, you lose both BIOSes. You don't have to send the whole board in. Gigabyte can just ship you a BIOS ROM, and you can just toss it in there. But if you do that, make sure you keep track of what pins are going where. You know, you don't want to fry anything. Okay, uh, so we have a clear CMOS here next to the front panels. This must be the second embedded controller. Uh, this is your debug port. This must either be a power or reset button. Um, Three fan headers here, uh, USB 2.0 here, trusted platform module mini right there, another RGB header, a digital LED header, which is also called addressable. You got your dual BIOS and your single BIOS mode switches, they're both on number position one. The dual BIOS switch allows you to switch between the BIOSes, the single BIOS switch allows you to cut the ties between the BIOSes. It's an overclocking feature that's useful when doing like liquid nitrogen stuff, because sometimes a dual BIOS check where the main BIOS checks the backup or the backup checks the main or whatever it does uh, can cause issues on boot uh, but only under extreme conditions like liquid nitrogen so and also with like special BIOSes uh, that Gigabyte's overclockers use so they put the switch on uh, just in case you want to do that and then we also have our typical like uh, audio header SPI def yeah, let me switch it over here. It seems like this illuminates uh, in the pictures I've seen. We got some uh, electrolytic capacitors here. We got some WEMA film capacitors there. Uh, we got some M.2 heat sinks here. So at least you got three M.2 slots. I believe on this board, uh, let's go over to the thing. On this board, this will share with this, but they will not share with this. So putting a card here won't affect the bandwidth of here. However, putting a card here will, will, uh, I think take bandwidth from this. Let me just make sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. This will take bandwidth from this. They're both by 4 right? PCI 3.0. Uh, 
Um, and yeah, and uh, let's see what else we got going. And then I bet you this one takes two SATA ports, just like on the Pro. But this, unlike the Pro, these two share, but the Pro only has two M.2 uh, slots, not three. Alright, so let's take the M.2s. Oh, actually, I don't know what we didn't do the back panel. Okay, can you see this? Okay, we got a clear CMOS, a power button, your Wi Fi headers, four USB 2.0 ports, USB 3.0 DAC up, which means like better power delivery, HDMI port, USB 3.1 Type C, and four more USB 3.1 ports. That's a lot of USB 3.1. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, if they're calling those USB 3.0 and the other one's USB 3.1, they're obviously going to be 10 gigabits. This block diagram. Oh, yeah, no, okay. I see it now. It's on the block diagram. It just, it's a big block diagram. All right, and this is Aorus. What material is this? It's plastic, but it looks matte. Like, it looks like rubber. You guys see that? Yeah, you guys can see that. Three of them. Uh, they're decent thickness. Um, they match the other components. We'll put them to the side. Okay, so you've basically seen all the macro features. Um, and now let's take a look at the chipset, oh, the design. So on these motherboards, the way you do it is because it has a back shield. The way you have to do it is basically unscrew a few screws that you'll find on the top side. These are like the first ones you do. I think there's video evidence of this. As if I always tell myself I should just videotape myself doing these type of boards because there's so many different types of screws on these motherboards that it's very easy to forget which screws go to what. Okay, now we flip her over and find a bunch of other screws we've got to remove. So this one. Now on this one, a standoff we're going to have to remove as well. Fun! So this back shield is aluminum, um, I don't know the thickness, it's thick enough, it's going to be acting like a heat sink in these areas, uh, so yeah. I highly recommend if you do end up taking it apart, you do not forget the thermal pads here, because if this metal makes contact with those components, it's probably not going to be a good thing, but that's just my guess. Pretty good contact. These are thick thermal pads, but I guess that makes sense because in no universe would you want this metal touching the top of these little MLCC. They're basically metallic capacitors. All right, so this is an IR VRM. I can tell by the little doublers here. They're really tiny. Um, you see one here, here, here. Where else can we see them? Um, the other ones on the other side are probably top side. There's one here. These are IR3599. They're doublers or quadruplers. I guess in this case a doubler. Because uh, we're not quadrupling anything here. Okay, so these standoffs, they need to be plied off. I get really nervous taking these off. It doesn't help. Because the last thing I want to do is scratch the PCB. Right I really wish they wouldn't make these screws as well. Oh, it come off now. Yeah, see, these go into the plastic shields on the top side. Um, and they also keep the other thing up. But I could use like a socket, you know? Like something that fits this, but I don't have that with the little toolkit I have here. I do have some at home. Maybe I should start bringing them if I'm going to see more boards like this. 
But I think Gigabyte's the only brand that does it like this. But honestly, you're not supposed to open this anyway. Um, it's really easy to kill the board in this manner. I've just been working with motherboards for so long that I actually I know how not to kill them. There's a special way you can do things. Um, it does work. Twenty minutes already. Woo! It's Seven o'clock right now. Tomorrow I have to go to New York City for some events. I don't know if I'm allowed to say what. Actually, this video can't go live until I'm allowed to say anything. Anyways, we'll see. Okay, everything has been unscrewed. This looks to be four RGB. Yeah, so this is RGB. It probably lights up this entire thing. Actually, can you even see that? No, okay. It lights up the entire thing. It's quite nice. I really want to know what it looks like. It looks like they diffused it. So that's what I really like to see. I like the fusion. Here we have this. Is that really screwed into the chips? Oh my god. Wow. Okay, this is not going to be fun. What's holding this in? <laughs> Something here. Did I miss a screw? Yeah. So you never want to force anything in these things, and even I make mistakes. I can't believe they fused. The two together, alright, watch it. This is your integrated I.O. shield here. See, it's more than just a piece of tin. Okay, looks like digital RGBs. In there. Okay, well, that was fun. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to uh, do this. I'm gonna try to keep everything just as you found it. Anyways, it'll do its job. I'm not really concerned about it. Okay, so it looks like they're making great contact. These are IR3553. I can just tell from here. Um, Okay, so for some re random reason, my camera stopped recording, and I don't have time to redo this, so I'm just going to go over this part again and try to cut in. Alright, so here's a motherboard bear. Here's this heatsink. This heatsink is very nice. It has direct touch heat pipes. So you see that copper? That copper is making direct contact with this high-end thermal pad. And you got fins on there, real fins. You got 12-phase digital VRM powered by an IR35201. Uh, it's in 6 plus 2 phase modes, I assume. 6 phase is being doubled by some IR3599 uh, doublers um, on the back side. And then here, yeah, there's six of them. There's two here and four on the back. They're really tiny little chiclets. Then the power stages are 40 amp IR3553. Your GPU uh, MOSFETs are right here. Uh, they're just normal MOSFETs, power packs. Um, and they're two phases. And no one really cares too much about the GPU on these motherboards because if you're going to buy something high and white, go like that. Going around here, uh, we do see some power stages, uh, probably from memory. We also see some power here for the USB 3.0 internal headers. Uh, and this is USB 3.1, uh, and I think that's a read driver. No, it's not. Anyways, you probably don't need it so close anyway. Uh, so we got your BIOS ROMs here, main Super IO here, USB 2.0 hub there, uh, an IT chip here, and... Okay. So yeah, you got this uh, thing here, uh, that hub for these two. Uh, IT, uh, this is an embedded controller. This embedded controller is why these are labeled EC, temperature inputs. And uh, you have an IT chip here. It's probably a microcontroller that controls digital addressable RGB headers. 
Uh, we have an ESS ES9118 DAC here with an ALC1220, some high-end capacitors, and uh, that will give you 125 dB SNR through the back. And I guess the internal DAC in here is going to be used for this. Right here, we have some Paracom PI3 EQX redrivers for four USB 3.1 ports, and then we have one Type-C switch because when they're not the same, so when you flip it, it messes things up a little bit. Here we have another USB 2.0 hub, uh, so you get four of them right there. Um, yeah, and then we have. What else do we have here? Oh, we have level shifter, so we get the HDMI output on the back. That is the only video output this motherboard has. So what else, what else, what else? Okay, we got some switches here. These four will move this 8x here to this. Uh, these two will move by four from here to one of these I'm not two slots. This switch will switch two by two this, probably with this or this. Um, what else? I don't know what this little switch is doing, but it's a high-end NXP switch. And I think it allows multi-directional switching, which is kind of cool. So this is a high-end motherboard. Very, very nice. Very nice. Um, I like the VRM. Probably do really well, especially with the expanded powertrain. And the copper in the PCB has been doubled, uh, which is great. I don't think many of Gigabyte's, if any, uh, Z370 motherboards had two ounces of copper in them, but these do. Gigabyte's calling it two times copper because before everyone just uses one as the standard in the industry. Gigabyte's using two. Uh, so it makes the motherboard not only stronger, I can't bend this like I can other boards, but it also makes it uh, uh, better thermally and even like power conduction to the CPU. The area has been widened, so it's pretty good. Um, yeah, so it goes 16, 8, and then always 4 unless one of these M.2s are taken. The manual will tell you that. Oh, I didn't go over the two BIOS ROMs are here, 120 megabits, and one of them is in a socket, so you can switch it out if you like. You guys want to see me put it back together? <laughs> Oh man, I can't believe I gotta do this right now. You know what? I'll do it when I get back from New York. I'll leave this like this, and if you guys and gals have any questions, please leave them. I'll try to answer them best I can from the menu, manual. Um, performance of these motherboards is not public yet. There's another NDA for that. So, please like it, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. But yeah, very nice. Very nice VRM. Very nice power stages, very nice heatsink. The heatsink has really been, really, they upped their game with the heatsink. Um, it's quite nice. Very, very nice. So the direct copper on the heat pipe is pretty cool. Um, they shaved it down a little bit so that there's direct copper exposure. Uh, and it's a nice thing to have because... I mean, it's making direct contact with the heat pipe, and it does seem to be, with the, with the thermal pads, and it does seem to be raised like a tiny bit over, making that possible. And the fins are nice. Um, I'm sure the copper, the fins directly attached to the heat pipe, that would be a good design. So they basically did the best of both worlds. They got the design that people like the look of, and it looks more futuristic, and then they got the radiator design that's actually effective uh, in one piece, in one heat sink, right? So that's what it looks like. Usually there's going to be this over it. So you wouldn't see it. But yeah, it's a direct touch. Well, not direct, direct, but direct enough. You gotta have some kind of thermal interface material there. So yeah, pretty cool. If you have any questions or comments, once again, please leave them. Thank you.